Hey everyone, welcome back to SJ Woodworks. Uh, today in the shop, you know, something I've noticed about woodworking, it seems like about half of the projects that we make are for the shop. Like either we're making a jig or a chuck or some kind of uh, solution for a storage or something for the shop. You know, the other half are things that we're actually trying to produce in our shop, like bowls or pens or whatever. Today's going to be a shop project. Um, what I want to do with this little scrap of maple, uh, and this is a really hard old maple, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I want to make a wooden live center for my lathe. Uh, let me bring in and, and show you what I mean. Okay, what you're looking at here is the tailstock for the Jet 1642 lathe. This is all uh, standard equipment. And this is the uh, live center that comes with it. Here's your 60 degree cone. And this is pretty similar to the one way live center, a little bit different. Um, if you take off this cone, we'll slide this pin right in here, remove the cone, and underneath you find this uh, cup center with a point. And um, basically a lot of times when I'm securing something with, you know, between turning something between centers, I'm going to use this uh, for the tailstock side. And it works great and, uh, you know, it'll secure pretty well, but of course this point drives into the wood. Um, sometimes if I've got something reversed on the against the chuck like to finish the bottom of a bowl for example if I have a recess there I might not want that point driving into something so what I want to do is make a piece of wood that I can screw right on to this these threads and um, and have it just be you know something that can provide support but not pierce the wood at all so I know other folks have made this and I you know I think I've come up with a way that I think might work so let's give it a shot Okay, I've got this piece of rock hard maple um, between centers on the lathe here, mounted between centers. So that means I've got the um, drive spur over here and just using the uh, the live center down here that, that we just looked at. First thing we're gonna do is just make sure the cylinder is all trued up and round and then I'm gonna cut a tenon on both sides to fit in my chuck and I'll show you why uh, in just a minute. Okay, we've got a little starting point there. Now this Jacob's Chuck has a 5 8 Forstner bit in it. The reason why I chose 5 8 is because the uh, spindle that I'm going to be threading this wood onto is a 3 quarter by 10 uh, threads. That means that it's 3, three quarter inches around and th 10 threads per inch. And so to get 3 quarter inch uh, threads, what I need to have is a 5 8 inch hole, then I'll tap it to get the rest of the way to 3 quarters. So this is a 5 8 inch Forstner bit here. I have a piece of tape to mark, mark to the depth that I'm going to go. And um, so I'm just going to switch the Jacobs chuck here and then drill this out. I'm, I'm Okay, we got it in there. We still got just a little bit of a wobble. You might have noticed. I think it's going to be okay. Um, so we'll figure it out. But the next step is going to be for us to tap that hole with threads. So let me get set up for that. Okay, here's where we're really going to get creative. Um, I, I think this is going to work, so bear with me while I explain technically what I'm going to do. So first of all, for the, t for the tapping operation, we're going to use this. This is just a 3 quarter by 10 tap. You can see these teeth here are what's going to actually bite into the wood and uh, and create the threads basically. Um, I have a piece of tape here just to mark for the depth that we're going to need. It's about the same depth of the hole that we just drilled. The lathe stays off for this operation so but we want to we're going to use the lathe to keep everything centered up. And I'll show you how that's going to work. First thing is we need to lock the spindle. Um, well the Jet 1642 has a spindle lock but it's a button that you press. It doesn't lock and stay locked. So I'm going to be creative here, and again, this is not um, something I recommend you doing because I don't want you to do anything that's not safe. If you feel comfortable, you know, you figure out what you're going to do. This is what's going to work for me. Um, basically, I put the long tool rest on here uh, onto my lathe, and um, this is the button that locks the spindle, and I've just put the tool rest to press that button and hold it in for me. So the spindle is nice and locked. 
Again, the lathe is staying off for this entire operation and I'll be moving that tool rest before I turn it on. You never want to turn on your lathe with your spindle locked, of course, that, that could be a disaster. Now, moving back over here. Again, I have this blank chucked up here with the 5 8 inch hole that we drilled here. Over here, I have my cone center put back on here. This is the live center that comes with the lathe again. The cone is on here. Now, the cone is just here to make the bit be centered. On the back, this is our, our tapping bit again. Um, on the back, there's this little hole here. That cone is going to sit in that hole and just keep it centered while we drive it in. The cone and the, and the live center are not going to provide any pressure. I'm not going to push with this. Um, there's a square back on here, and I'm just going to use a wrench to uh, twist this into the, the hole here. The cone is just going to be there to provide support to keep it all straight while it's going in there. So let's get this set up. We'll just put this in here just a little bit. It's tapered threads here to help you get it started so the end you know, doesn't have the cutting threads. So you can just kind of get that into the hole, bring up the cone, and I'm going to lock down the tail stock. And I'm going to make sure that the hand wheel is unlocked so I can just advance the cone while I twist this bit with a wrench. I'm going to have to move the camera to a different spot while I do this, so let's do that right now. Okay, I put the camera back behind the lathe. I think that's the best place for you to watch while I can still use everything because I've got to use my wrench here to twist this, uh, this tap around while I use my other hand just off camera, I think, where you can't see. I'm going to just twist the wheel of the live center to just keep this moving forward. Again, this is not going to provide pressure to this. I'm just going to twist it right in there with this wrench. This is providing support to drive it in straight, and that's it. So you keep in mind that... Um, the t one turn of this thing does not necessarily mean one turn of the hand wheel to keep this center. So you really got to pay attention here. We're just going to the depth of the tape. So let's try this out. Okay, I turned off the camera for a bit, honestly, because it's a little embarrassing how much work it was to get this thing coming out. But um, I've got it coming out. I'm using a spanner to just hold the chuck here. And uh, once I got it started, it's coming out here. Okay, now here's the trick. What we really need to do with these threads now is reinforce them by kind of soaking them with uh, super thin CA glue and then cutting the threads again. And that'll make this last really a long time. These threads will be really hard. So I'm going to do that now off camera so you don't have to watch the whole procedure again. But I'm just going to kind of douse all this in here with thin CA and then cut the threads again exactly like we just did once that's dry. So I'll be back when I'm done with that. Okay, what we've done here now is actually turn this piece around in the chuck. Now this is the reason why we had the tenon cut on, on the other side. Because now the side that is tapped, drilled and tapped is in the chuck here. And this is the end side. So now we got to work on this side because when we put this onto our live center, we're going to screw this end into our live center right here. And whatever we're going to press up against our workpiece is going to be out here. I've drawn a line here to mark how deep the drilling is. I just went by the depth gauge that I put on the on the tap and on the drill bit. This is how deep the drilling is. And it's not very big inside. Remember, it's only a three quarter inch hole right now. So we can shape a lot of this off. In fact, I'm gonna part this off right about here to get rid of all this over here. So I'll have this little, you know, bit left over as a waste block or something later. And then we're gonna shape this down to what I want it to look like. And, uh, and I'm going to sand it down and make it look nice, even though it's just a utility piece. I still want it to look nice. So we're going to part it off, shape it with our carbide tools, and uh, then we'll be all set.
you know, now that I'm looking at this, I think we're going to make this quite a bit smaller. You know, when we have this on our tailstock, and this is our live center, we're going to want to have room to work around this. And the hole that's inside this is quite a bit smaller than this. Um, you know, the end here has a diameter right now of about, uh, I don't know, one and almost three-eighths inches. And um, I want to bring it down at least another three-eighths of an inch to make sure I'll have room to work around this. So I'm going to get the carbide tool back out and, and bring it down. Right, just a little Danish oil right here on the lathe. Can't leave anything unfinished or unprotected, so. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry, give it another coat or two, and then I'll be back. Okay, so now we test it out, I guess. Um, we've got it all finished, a couple of nice burn lines in there, a couple of coats of Danish oil, just to, you know, make it not look terrible. It's utilitarian, you know, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but it did come out looking pretty good, and the threads work okay. They do get a little bit snug here um, as it gets close to getting up to the end, but over time those are gonna loosen themselves up a little bit and they'll, uh, they'll be just fine, I think. So, yeah, we've got our um, our wooden live center that's going to work great up against the back of bowls when uh, I've got them up there, and I've got you know maybe a recess that I don't want to have pierced with the point of the cup center or anything like that. Uh, this will provide some pressure without uh, without poking a hole in the back of it. So I think you'll probably see me using this in future projects. Okay, thanks for joining me today on SJ Woodworks. You can see here's our wooden live center right here. Uh, I'm gonna just keep this on the shelf over there with my other live centers and uh, this is just gonna be now one of my shop tools. I think it came out great. Uh, we had you know, some challenges with this being really hard old maple, but I think it worked out okay and this should last me a long time. So uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe here on YouTube and I appreciate you dropping by and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.